So in 2024, how much RAM do you actually need to game? Do you need 16 gigabytes or do you need 32 gigabytes? And the answer actually depends on a lot of different factors. A, it can be the type of game that you're playing. So in this video, we're going to be concentrating on AAA games that came out recently. So we're talking like Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts Legacy, Starfield, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and Forza Motorsport. Now, these games came out within 2022 and 2023. So aside from the type of game that you're playing, it's going to depend on your resolution, what settings you have it on, if you're going to be doing native, upscaling, or ray tracing. So the higher the uh, resolution, the higher the settings, and with ray tracing enabled, it's going to use more RAM than if you have medium settings with nothing like that enabled. And also to give a little bit better of an idea of how much RAM you need, I'm going to be using an AM4 system, but with two different types of hardware. One's going to be a 50, the Ryzen 5 5600 paired with an RX 7600, so a little bit on the lower end, as well as a 50, Ryzen 9 5900X paired with a 4070 Ti. So that should give a kind of a good idea at the low end versus the top end, what you can expect for RAM usage. So if you are building a new system, I definitely recommend just getting the 32 gigabytes to 16 gigabyte sticks because it, you can find deals where it costs just as much or just as cheap as two eight gigabytes and you don't have to worry about upgrading down the road. Don't plan on gaming. Really all you need is about eight, eight gigabytes. That's enough to play some light games, some older games and surfing the internet, uh, watching movies, things like that. If you are using it more for productivity, you want to do some video editing, uh, 32 gigabytes is the way you want to go. You're going to need that extra RAM to be able to do that. But then when you get to gaming, it's more of an in-between. So the games I tested had minimum requirements of 8 to 16 gigabytes. We're talking for performance-wise 1080p, 30fps uh, with lower settings. And at the higher end for the recommended settings, it was asking for 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM, and that's for 1440p, 60fps, uh, with ray tracing and things like that. So when I was testing it out, we were using native resolution with ultra settings. I did not have ray tracing enabled, I didn't adjust the settings either way, except for Hogwarts Legacy, I actually had to adjust that down to the second highest level. Uh, I can't remember if it was just high or very high. But if I went with Ultra, for some reason, it would just crash my system. So I had to, uh, so it didn't play nice with my 4070 Ti. So I had to actually uh, drop the, the settings down. And I had it at the same settings when I tested it for the RX 7600. Now, when these games had 32 gigabytes of RAM, Hogwarts Legacy used up to 25 gigabytes during my testing. Star Wars Jedi Survivor used 21 gigabytes. Cyberpunk 2077 used 16 gigabytes. Forza Motorsport used 18 gigabytes. And Starfield used 19 gigabytes. Just to give you a sense of what the game, plus your system background apps, will be using um, without any kind of RAM management when you have 32 gigabytes of RAM available. So starting off with the 5600 system paired with the 7600. The results were actually fairly comparable. There wasn't much difference between 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes. There was a couple FPS difference on average with Hogwarts Legacy. And in Starfield, there was also a couple FPS difference on the 1% low and on the average, but everything else was pretty much the same. So that's a good indicator that when using a lower system, if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, there is no bottleneck to your system um, currently. That's not saying that games down the road, when they come out, uh, that are going to be more demanding, that they're going to need additional RAM for the minimum requirements. But in this case, 32 gigabytes did not make any difference. I didn't test it out at 1440p just because the 7600 doesn't really perform that well at that resolution. So moving on to the 5900X paired with the 4070 Ti at 1080p, we actually see quite uh, a big improvement using 32 gigabytes over 16 gigabytes. Hogwarts Legacy showed a big improvement. On the average was a 10% increase, but on the 1% low, 
we saw an additional 10 FPS increase, which worked out to about a 23% increase. So we see it, we saw a big bump there. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, there was a minor increase of about 6% on the 1% low and on the average, which isn't that big of a bump. Uh, Starfield, not much of a difference on the average, but on the 1% low, there was an 18% increase. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077, a little bit of an increase on average, but not really big. And then for the motorsport, we did see a 5% increase in the average FPS and a 10% increase in the 1% low. So given this, going to 32 gigabytes definitely is a must. Uh, at 16 gigabytes, that is definitely bottlenecking your system if you have higher end hardware. Not very much in all cases, but in some cases, especially some of the newer games like Hogwarts Legacy, there's a pretty big bump in performance when going to 32 gigabytes. Now taking a look at 1440p, and we're seeing similar results. Hogwarts Legacy has 11% increase in average and a 31% increase in the 1% low. So another takeaway from this is that you're actually getting smoother gameplay because it's boosting that 1% low. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, we only had a 1% increase in the average, but there was a 19% increase in the 1% low. Starfield, we did pick up a couple extra FPS on the 1% low. Uh, same with Star War, or Cyberpunk 2077, a couple percent on the 1% low and the average. When you move on to Forza Motorsport, you pick up an extra 5% in the average and 10% on the 1% low. So again, 1080p and a 1440p higher end systems, a 32 gigabytes is a must. So if you were thinking uh, that you need to pick up a couple extra sticks for your existing system to get better performance, it's definitely worth it.